Hey everybody, I'm Matt. And I'm Alex. And we are here at Powder 7 World Headquarters in our new studio to talk to you about our favorite skis of 2023-2024. This is the big mountain and free ride category. So these skis generally fall between around 102 millimeters underfoot to all the way up to 114 this year. We really think of them uh, as the tools of the trade for the big mountains we like to ski out west here, um, especially if you're hunting powder in back bowls or hopefully taking cat trips. Um, they're good for touring, uh, some of the lighter ones, and they're also good for just hauling out here. So um, yeah, impressions on the big mountain freeride category. Yeah, I like to think of these as big skis, but not too big. They're gonna be a little bit more versatile for dealing with your resort conditions like bumps and trees compared to powder specific skis. So yeah. we spend a lot of time on these skis uh, here in our, as our daily drivers in Colorado. So we're stoked to share the new ones with you. For sure, let's dive into it. So the first ski we're gonna talk about is not a new ski for 2024, but it is definitely a favorite that our staffers really enjoyed at our 2024 ski test. This is the Fisher Ranger 108, debuted two years ago as a when Fisher Fisher redid the Ranger collection. And the 108 is my favorite ski in the collection. I'll tell you a couple reasons why. For one thing, you've got shaped metal under your foot, shaped TI. You can see it, it's a trend in skis where you can kind of see where the metal laminate is. Uh, no different here. Um, so a nice sturdy feel under your foot, some of that energy and torsional rigidity that metal gives you. Uh, so these skis have a nice planted feel under your foot. Uh, metal tapers out, there's a little bit of a cutout here to help give this ski a really progressive flex. And it's 108 underfoot. Um, a decent amount of side cut for a ski in this category makes the tips feel pretty wide when you're skiing like crud or powder, heavier pal. They're really good at floating up. The first time I skied this ski, I thought I was on a 115. I, if you kind of keep your feet together, keep a really dynamic skiing position, these skis feel really powerful blowing through piled up crud or like heavy powder in a back bowl at 2 p.m. when the sun gets to it, but they don't feel overly demanding. So you can thank uh, a nice, pretty, pretty straightforward free ride rocker profile uh, with rocker in the tips and the tails. You've got a lot of taper up here, especially in the tips. Um, so it really helps you uh, easily initiate turns. These skis are fairly pivoty um, and they've got a really nice progressive flex pattern. So yes, they have a little metal under your foot, but don't think of them as really super rigid skis. We've got much more rigid options up here on the board. So a really good um, all around ski that leans a little bit more toward the playful side, I would say. It's not light and playful, but a little bit of a big mountain slayer, that's versatile with a little bit more of a playful bent to it. So Ranger 108 Ti, anything, any other thoughts you had on this? No, I like how you mentioned that you felt like you got a lot of float out of it uh, for it being a 108 ski. I've also heard it carves really well for the size too. So it's almost yeah. like you get a ski that carves really well for the size and floats really well for the size. Yeah. So it does both really well, which is always a perk for this kind of category when you're dealing with a lot of variable conditions and yep. things like that. And an, uh, 178 is the shortest size in this guy. Mm -hmm. Um, the rest of the Fisher collection branded a lot as unisex skis. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so it'd be nice if they made this shorter, but maybe sometime. At 5'8", 130-ish, I could ski the 178. Uh, and so any aggressive ladies who are looking for a big mountain ski around this like size, or if you like to ski in the upper 170s, you'll get along with this just fine. For sure. <clears throat> Moving now to a new ski for 2024 the Mindbender 106C. So this was in the lineup as a women's specific ski for the last few years. K2 decided that it was just so good, they'd give it to everybody. So this whole ski got kind of a redo for this year, basically a tweaked rocker profile. So you get deeper rocker, especially in the tail, and then also very deep rocker in the tip too. So this is more rocker than the previous versions to increase my maneuverability and make it more playful, especially compared to the very popular Mindbender TI family. So comparing this to the 108 TI, this is gonna feel a lot more maneuverable, easy to pivot, really drifty, all that stuff. It's also a bit lighter than the TI family. They use the carbon spectral braid in here, as well as flax, which is something we're seeing kind of pop up in the ski industry now. It's a really lightweight material that does a great job of dampening. So it's also really sustainable. So ski industry is definitely leaning that way and we love it. Every ski I've skied with flax has been awesome. Does a really good job of just smoothing out all those vibrations in the snow. But this ski, 
really great option if you're looking for something playful that you can still kind of pressure the shovels with a little bit more if you're not looking for something super centered and really easy to get sideways. This definitely is happy with you kind of pushing a little bit more into the front of your skis and to the front of your boots while still being very maneuverable and easy to kind of get out of a tricky situation if you need to. So another great all around ski for this year. Yeah. Yeah, I like those a lot. The mm -hmm. K2's done a nice job with the mind benders. And I think one point that they made is that if you're comparing the TI mind benders to the C's, it's not so much a comparison of what's easier or what's harder to ski. I think the C's can for sure be an expert ski, totally. um, depending on your preferences. Uh, it's a little bit more of just a different feel on snow. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't think of it as far as ability, I would think of the differences in how they feel on snow. Yeah. Super smooth. In but. your style, yeah, very smooth riding, gobbles up, icy kind of like refrozen snow really well. Great. Gobbles it up. All right, so the next one on my side here is a brand new ski for 2024. This is the Line Bacon 108. So Line overhauled the Sir Francis Bacon collection, which has become like a cult favorite in skis. Um, and a lot of people are gonna be really bummed out <laughs> that they changed that collection. This is a very different ski than previous Sir Francis Bacons. So um, it's a lot heavier. Line uses a reinforced sidewall, so you get a pretty stout ski under your foot. You're gonna notice it feels a lot more planted. If you're familiar with the old Sir Francis Bacon, this ski feels heavier, is heavier, feels more planted under your foot. There is more mass under here than in previous Sir Francis Bacons. Uh, really deep rocker lines, so it's gonna be pivoty and smeary like you would expect and hope for. Uh, but what's really interesting, I think this ski, <laughs> feels unique on snow. And I think that's saying something uh, when at a time when a lot of skis can kind of feel the same. The line Bacon 108 feels, again, really stout under your feet, very light and a pretty soft flex pattern up through the tips and down through your tails. So line uses a, a thin glass insert here in the tips. They're very thin tips. They took a lot of material out of, out of these. So it's more of a durable construction. The tips should hold up better over time. Um, it's more eco-friendly as well, uh, but we all want to know how stuff skis, right? So with these skis, you get a really precise feel because you're really planted under your feet and very light up in your tails, uh, up in your tips and through the tails. So very pivoty, um, easy to kind of like tip and go, and then also easy to smear your, your turns or slarve. Um, not as poppy as the old Sir Francis Bacon. Um, still, still definitely a playful ski with a kind of soft side of medium flex pattern. Uh, so this is gonna be in this big mountain category for sure. Leaned at people still, I know it's heavier than the last Sir Francis Bacon, but still leaned at people with a, a more playful preference, more playful ski style. Um, it's gonna make you feel pretty uh, at home. It's confidence inspiring in steep uh, terrain with variable snow under your foot because it feels so damp uh, right below your boot. Uh, but when you get into some chop or crud, especially if it's heavier, these tips do tend to get bounced around. I don't think it's a, it doesn't lose stability, but it is uh, something that happens with lighter tips that feel great in soft snow um, and are very poppy and playful. That's kind of a trade-off that you make. So I still really, I liked the old Sir Francis Bacon quite a bit. I'm, I'm a big fan of this new Bacon 108. It is a very different ski, um, but it's a really nice option for people to add to their quivers, especially if they've got like a kind of a more run of the mill, all mountain ski, really fun addition mm -hmm. in that upper waist width part of your quiver. Yeah, totally. Plus new lime freshy mint graphics. Yeah, green machine. <laughs> On the very opposite end of the spectrum now, I have the new Vocal Secret 102. This is the same ski as the Vocal Mantra 102 and kind of building off the same build as the Secret 96 and Mantra M6, just on a wider platform with a little bit more metal to give you a little bit more power. This is the most narrow ski in this big mountain category, but we still picked it because it floats well for the size and it just does really well in those big mountain conditions. I was skiing this up at Loveland off of Lift 9, which is a very wind affected, sun affected area, and it can just like plow through all of that uh, all of that varying snow condition, like a Swiss army knife, which is great. Um, so the secret got the update as the Mantra 102 did last year. So you get the Taylor carbon tips to help dampen the ski and the tip, and then the Tetanol frame and glass frame that kind of runs through this. This is the tailored uh, Tetanol frame. So as you go up in length, 
the metal goes up in size to give you more power as a larger or more aggressive skier. And as you go down in size, a little less metal. But I just really like this ski. I think it does a lot really well and it gives you a little bit more versatility in this big, big mountain category, being a little bit more nimble underfoot than something like the Vocal Revolt that's at 114. So it's just gonna navigate some of that tighter terrain a little bit better. I love the ski in steeps. It's very quick to respond, um, all that good stuff that you look for. And it does definitely prefer kind of a more experienced, aggressive pilot just to help kind of keep the ski engaged since it's a little bit stiffer. But if you like to ski fast, take big turns, this is a fantastic option for you. So you can really trust your trust your gear. I think all those comments apply to the 102 Mantra as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're here looking for that ski, um, same nuts and bolts here. It feels a lot, you know, it does the same stuff on snow. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of Alex's comments would carry over to the Mantra 102 for sure. Yep, totally. Nice. Well, you teased my next ski, Alex. Oh, <laughs> this is Vocal Revolt 114, brand new ski for 2024. Uh, if you're familiar with the Revolt collection, uh, you're gonna think all mountain freestyle skis. That's not really how I would describe the Revolt 114. <laughs> uh, this ski is for sure the most directional out of the Revolt collection. You can kind of see it's got a very tapered uh, tip shape. So progressive free ride ski, you're thinking playful, but then if we look at the tails here, pin tails, they're very, uh, much more of a directional shape than we see in the other revolts. Um, pretty deep rocker lines, taper both tip and tail. So you want, those are the standard, standard bearers, right? For this category, you want to be able to smear and pow, float and pow, um, vary your turn shapes easily. Uh, but in this category, the revolt 114 is for sure one of the most aggressive, um, bomber skis without the katana around i think this is where i would point people looking for like a, a mid fat or fat <laughs> probably to a lot of people 114 <laughs> yeah. uh all mountain ski or all mountain big mountain powder ski right so uh very planted under your foot i love this ski uh the, my mo my favorite day on it was at crested butte uh on peel and it had snowed eight inches overnight. So we had some fluff on top, but it had frozen underneath. Uh, the previous afternoon softened up and froze overnight. So it's Western dust on crust. And this ski handles that stuff exceptionally well. It's super powerful. Uh, one thing I would say about it is for a lot of skis in this category, we often recommend sizing up. So if you're used to skiing these wider skis and maybe a little bit longer length, I would say the Revolt 114, you can actually ski right at a normal um, length for you, if not on the shorter side. So I would, I ski a lot of this stuff, the low 180s I like for these big mountain skis. Um, I for, for sure prefer the 177 Revolt 114 to the 184 mm -hmm. uh, because it's got so much gur to it, uh, so much power and, and bulk. Uh, I like the little bit shorter length, gives me extra maneuverability and I don't feel like I lose any stability. Um, Vocal did pack 3D radius side cut into these skis. So it is intuitive to vary your turn shapes and turn lengths and all that stuff. Like you come to expect with kind of that vocal tech. Um, so it's not like uh, only experts all the time ski. I think a very stoked, you know, advanced skier can get on this. And uh, as long as you stay forward with a dynamic ski position, uh, you're gonna really enjoy Revolt 114 on the more aggressive side of this category. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. We kind of put it in this big mountain category as opposed to powder, just because it has so much gur to it. And if you're dealing with more like choppy snow, things like that, it's gonna it's gonna do you right, as opposed to maybe some lighter and softer powder skis, so. Yeah, yeah. you're not gonna get bounced around on, on that ski. No, definitely <laughs> not, yeah. certainly not. Now, finally, a ski. You don't necessarily need to like drive through the shovels all day long. This is the Atomic Bent 110. Um, came out last year. It comes back this year without any internal changes. Got this kind of fresh new graphic that I have mixed up. There you go. We love everything from the Bent family. You know, the Bent Shetler 120 was kind of the first brainchild of this. And you can think of the Bent 110 as kind of just a narrower Bent Shetler 120. So a little bit more nimble little bit more reasonable as a daily driver, especially if you're dealing with softer snow. But this definitely leans on the way more playful side of this category. So if you like to ski switch, if you're jumping off of features a lot, um, looking to do some new tri tricks, tricks, <laughs> tricks and twists, 
Uh, this is a great ski for you. Very soft flex. So if you like to butter, um, this is going to do you right as well. The Atomic uses their Horizon Tech tip. So this is kind of a beveled tip shape here that helps you float on top of the snow. So you get a really nice bang for your buck in this 110 size. So if you're skiing morning freshies, you're gonna get on top of it really nicely and then be able to kind of navigate that afternoon skied out pow very well too. So this is a great do it all ski if you're on the more playful side of things or if you're looking at, for kind of like an entry level wider ski. This is going to do really well without being so wide and bulky as other powder skis while still getting a lot of bang for your buck flotation out of it. So, and I'd say best ski up here for pairing with like a hybrid touring binding. Totally. It like is a, probably the lightest up yep. here that we have. So, so a shift yeah. or a Duke PT or a straight up check touring binding. Mm -hmm. This is going to be your go-to out of our, our selection up here. Yeah, we actually, when this came out, we were dreaming of just mounting tech bindings on these and this being an awesome touring setup if you're dealing with a lot of soft snow. So yeah, great option. And beautiful graphics, pretty usual. As always. All right, so the last one on my side of the family here is the another brand new ski for 2023-24. You've probably heard about it. This is the Rosignol Sender Free 110. So Rosy, had the S lineup, S3 and S7, um, which were super awesome in soft snow, pow. Um, and then they introduced the Sender collection a couple of years ago, more directional. Um, they have thrown Black Ops at it on the free ride side along the way. So the new Sender Free collection blends that Black Ops construction, shapes and mount points with the Sender. So it's a nice middle ground. You've got a mount point that is not as far back as Sender, not as forward as Black Ops. You've got a sheet of metal under your foot. It's a little longer than average Tetanol sheet under your foot, so that's adding some torsional rigidity, some power, energy, and stability right under your feet. And then you've got air, tech, um, air tips, kind of a carbon weave through the tips of these skis. Um, all in all, the Sender Free, instantly when we tried it last year, it was very impressive to us um, we had a pair around the shop for a long time. A lot of our staffers got out on this pretty early last year. Then we had it at our ski test. Um, you can find our owner Jordan's uh, long form video review on our YouTube channel as well. So a lot of us have skied this and it's already withstood the test of time. So um, it's a re really nice pretty basis here. We all know that I love bases. Um, <laughs> it's a really nice blend of all the things we like in this free ride big mountain ski category. So really nice. Free ride rocker profile, tapered tips and tails, got a nice amount of tail splay here for skiing switch, landing backwards, um, or just looking cool, kicking up rooster tails. Uh, these skis um, are stout enough to really stomp landings, to feel really planted and chop or crud or heavier pow, um, but they're, I would call them more friendly and forgiving and more accessible than like the Revolt 114. So they're not full, full gur <laughs> all the time like, like that ski might be. Um, they're not going to beat you up if you get a little bit more backseat. Uh, they're not going to be as powerful as that ski, but you're, that's some of the trade-offs that you're making. I think in this category, um, the Sender Free, from my personal opinion, and the QST Blank from Solomon, probably two of the best rounded, well-rounded uh, big mountain free ride skis. Mm -hmm. um, so nobody had a bad word to say about these at our ski test and we're stoked to keep skiing them this year. Yeah, yeah. I think everything you spoke to just says, you know, everyone who's got on it has very different styles and all mm -hmm. of these different styles can hop on the ski and all have a really good time. So it just kind of adjusts really well to your different uh, style and how you like to explore the mountain, which is awesome in this category, so. Totally, yeah. and you can vary your experience. It's a fun ski to tailor your experience based on what length you choose. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I've skied the 184 and this 178, um, and I like them both quite a bit. And if I was buying it, I'd have a choice between a little bit more of like a traditional big mountain chargey in the 184 ski, mm -hmm. and a more of like a one ski quiver on the fatter side for like Colorado skiing on that shorter side. So mm -hmm. awesome job from, from Rosie. Yeah. And then the final ski to wrap up this video that I've got for you is a brand new ski from DPS. This is the DPS Kaizen 105 or the Carbon Kaizen 105. And this is a brand new shape from DPS. We've gotten used to their kind of nomenclature of RP and C2. Think of this as a blend between both of them. So you have a little bit, compared to the old C2 shape, you have a little bit more rocker 
than the C2 shape, but less than in the full RP or resort POW kind of shape. You also have very similar to that Revolt, a kind of pintail tail shape back here. So it's gonna be a little bit more directional, hold that turn really nicely. Uh, but this, all this tip rocker and splay up here is gonna help you get on top of the snow and find smooth and easy turn initiation, um, which is something I love about all these DPS skis is it's very intuitive to start your next turn. Feels very smooth, turn linkages between the two. So that's a great win. The construction in this is also brand new, kind of building off of their Pagoda Tours and their old Pagoda series. You have a new kind of layup of wood. They orient the woods in different kind of shapes and horizontals, horizontally and kind of vertically. And that helps provide like premium dampness, right? So we know DPS is riding really smoothly in all different snow conditions. And this is kind of the best of the best. You still get that carbon sandwich, layer of carbon on top, that wood in between layered in different ways, and then a layer of carbon underneath. So again, adds a bit of energy pop and spring while still being really damp and planted. So if you are a skier that likes to ski with a directional style, take fall line turns, take bigger turns, but aren't looking for something as heavy and bulky as like that Revolt 114 or something with a lot of metal in it, this is a great option because that turn, um, excuse me, that swing weight is really low. Um, doesn't feel like as much work to ski as something that's loaded up with a lot of weight, which is nice. So. For sure. And I, I'm somebody who has a fairly directional ski style, but I like to throw them sideways mm -hmm. and slash from time to time. And so a ski like that is a really nice blend of directional with a little bit more, a bit of a playful flair to it. Mm -hmm. So I like a, that. One. A flair is a good way to put it, because especially compared to something like the Bent 110, that's going to want to get sideways a lot, kind of pivot and slash most of the time. This one can do it, but it's not its um, tendency. Totally. Yeah. So uh, the Kaizen comes in a few different uh sizes this year there's also a 100 and a 112 but the 105 is the only one with this shape this year so um we're excited to spend more time on this but i think that wraps it up for i think it wraps it up big mountain this for year. the video mm. so if you guys are upset that we didn't mention a particular ski uh or didn't talk about jackets or helmets or whatever we do have our full buyer's guide available on the lift line blog mm -hmm. link is down below us in that description so before you hate on us in the comments for leaving a ski out out of the college football playoff scroll down click the link see the full buyer's guide then you can come back here and yell at us if we still <laughs> did you wrong yeah we've got all the other ski categories in there all mountain powder carving front side as well as like you said helmets goggles all the good stuff that you need for your ski season but and you can find all these skis all season long until they sell out i suppose so yeah. don't wait too long could be quick powder7.com and at our headquarters here in golden yeah have an awesome winter yeah we'll see you later